Hello, my name is Luke Parnell. Uh, I'm a carver and I've been carving for around 14 years. And I learned to carve Nishka style, but sometimes the stories I tell are high stories. I did measurements from the sketch, and I drew one side on, and I traced it and flipped it over, and drew the other side on, and all while I'm doing that, I'm sort of imagining where I need to make, start making my cuts, like where I need to start making my chainsaw cuts, and even though I'm drawing, I'm always thinking about how the sculpture's gonna look inside the pole, so. Like a lot of these details I'm gonna be cutting right off um, when I start roughing out, but I need to draw it just so I can sort of imagine it in, in the wood. The piece that I worked on for this video is called Storytellers Have Big Mouths. The reason I chose to style it the way I did was because I had never done a sculpture where the figure sort of popped off the wood, and I'd never done a raven, like a full, like flying raven on a total wood before either, so it was a couple elements that I'd never done before. And so the reason for the title is just, I just wanted to show the figure telling a story. Um, it's a raven, sort of a, a raven story. I don't really, haven't really decided which story yet, uh, but that's not really important. The idea isn't so much important what story he's telling, it's about the fact that he keeps telling these stories. And it sort of comes from a, something an elder told me once where he said that um, the reason they tell the same stories over and over again is so that we remember. And so that's sort of the idea behind it. What I'm going to do today is I'm just going to make a few initial cuts. So basically I'm just going to probably rough in the head a bit and do a few cuts for the raven. Carving stages are basically coming up with an idea. You can come from anywhere, whether it's telling a traditional story or maybe you're just doing a four crest pole. And once you do that, you sort of figure out what kind of uh, sort of crest you want to use, whether it's going to be all human beings or animals, and then you start planning. Once you figure out what you're going to do and you have like a scale drawing or a scaled maquette, then you start putting the design onto the totem pole. And you do that by measuring things on the pole, measuring points. And then once you draw it on, basically you just start roughing with the chainsaw and cutting bits away until it gets to a certain point. And then next you continue roughing with uh, hand tools. And then you continue roughing until you start using sort of smaller hand tools and then apply paint and then apply finish. It's pretty straightforward. It just takes a lot of work.
You hollow at the back of a totem pole because it helps it uh, dry or see them a little more evenly. The thicker parts will dry slower than the thin parts and it leads to cracking. And it's a big piece of wood so it'll always crack but it just helps it crack less and weight. Obviously it weighs less. My work is carved a little deeper than traditional Haida, but a lot of the Haida carvers nowadays carve pretty deep. If you look at an old Haida totem pole, a lot of times the figures will only be about two or three inches deep. So the carver won't carve any deeper than that. So it's a little bit more round than like say like Shimshan or Nishka carving where the old totem poles are more humanistic. And so they carved a lot deeper so that the figures look a bit more human. Like the arms and the legs, you know, have fingers and they're sort of shaped like a human figure. Whereas with the old Haida poles, it's much more design oriented. So, you know, an arm will look like a, a split U form and the legs will be sort of similar and the, and the hands will be sort of very stylized, sort of blocky rather than sort of human, looking like human hands. And, you know, and also the eyes, the eyes are more, they're more, they're more like panels, panels sort of stretched around a pole. Uh, whereas nowadays, if you look at a lot of Haida work, it's the same, but it's evolved quite a bit since the old days. Once I'm finished carving the totem pole, I am going to be working on a few smaller projects. Um, I'll be working on a mask um, and also an installation with 10 really small mask maquettes. Yeah, and I'll be doing some drawing and some writing, so just a bunch of small stuff. Um, and I'm also working on like an eight panel sequential narrative, which isn't such a small project, but um, I'm not sure if I'll get to that right away. Oh, 
if somebody was starting off carving, and I think I think you basically just need to start anywhere. Like if you're working if you're working on your own, then I would recommend you start with a mask and just dive right in. But if you're apprenticing and progressing and you're apprenticing with is working on a totem pole, then just do whatever you're told. Dive in. And just try not to cut yourself. Thank you.